The power can go out for a lot of different reasons, and here where we live, that can be quite frequent. Just the other day, I was filming a video of clearing our driveway, and when I came inside, I noticed that we had no power from the storm. But that's not a worry because I created this battery backup system that can power our entire house. That way we would still have lights, water, power, fans, everything we need. We no longer have to worry about the power going out because of our battery backup system. In this video, I'll share with you how we built it, how long it lasts, and why I think it's the future of most homes. We actually lived off of the grid for over five years on a battery system just like the one in our tiny home. Many of you who are familiar with the channel know that we lived out of our van full time. And the battery system we used full time to live off the grid was our five 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries that powered our inverter, which powered our life, our Wi-Fi, everything we needed to live off the grid. But the next thing on our horizon was something a little bit bigger. We we're moving away from the van and we started our build on our tiny home. But that got us thinking, do we wanna stay off grid? Do we wanna go on grid? What about a combination of both? That may sound silly to a lot of people. Why wouldn't you just stay off the grid? Well, both on-grid and off-grid have their merits. And I could talk for hours about why it was the right choice for us, but I'm not gonna put that in this video today. Let's go check out how we figured out how much battery power we needed to power our tiny home. In order to figure out how much battery power we needed, we basically added up all of our crucial components that would be powering off the battery system. We couldn't power everything because there's a lot of components in this home, but we chose the most crucial. If you wanna see how you can decide and calculate how much battery you need, you can watch this video I created. So we figured out that we needed four of these beautiful Battleborn GC3 batteries. Next, we had to figure out where we're gonna put them because in our tiny home, a lot of the space is already spoken for. Now, I did know eventually the day would come when we could put in a battery system. So luckily, I made sure there's extra space. In here is our utility closet at the far end of our home, which stores our utilities, obviously. But I made sure it went up through to the second floor. And you can see I built a platform there where what is that? Batteries. So up in the top of the closet is where I hide all the batteries behind this mirror. I'm going to make a cool thing for it later. But anyways, all the components are here. And obviously, batteries aren't the only thing you need. So let's take a look at that. So having created our system for our van, I knew we needed a couple things and I made a schematic to make sure we had the right wire and fuse sizes so that the system was proper. But in terms of components, let's see what we needed. Our system has four of these Battleborn GC3 270 amp hour batteries, which makes over 1,080 amp hours of battery storage, which is killer. We also have our battery monitoring systems, our Serbo GX and our BMV 712s. These are just basically ways of monitoring your power. We also have a solar charge controller, which isn't connected right now because I'm actually putting solar up on the roof this summer. So make sure you subscribe for that. We have a battery switch, which basically disconnects the system, allowing you to work on it if you need to safely, as well as this Lynx distributor. This is basically a bus bar, which connects your positive and negative leads to the rest of the system. And of course we have our inverter. This is a 3000 watt inverter, and it allows us to invert power from DC, which is what batteries use, to AC, which is what household power needs. Okay, I have to toot my own horn for a minute here. I'm so proud that I was able to fit all of this in this tiny, tiny space. And the way I made it work was this really smart, ingenious system of having a pull out, a slide out panel here that has all the system on it. I can fully pull it out so I can work on anything if I need to. So let's check out how I did all this. Once I figured out the best way to orient the batteries, I want to work on this component board. I knew I wanted it to slide out, so I need to create a system to make that work. I relatively knew where everything was gonna go, but I wasn't totally sure how it was gonna work yet. I made some spacers where it'd slide on top of the batteries, and the spacer would allow it to hide all of the wires below. That way the wires weren't a jumbled mess on top. And I was actually really happy with my proof of concept and the way it was working so far. 
It's important to be able to access everything you need on a system like this to do any maintenance. I had a general idea now of where everything was gonna go and I actually wrapped the component board in a fabric just to clean things up. You can see I also have some access holes for where the wires are gonna hide, but I think it turned out pretty good. Next is to connect the entire system together. So here you can see that I'm using one out wire with terminal lugs and I'm doing it all custom. That way it's pretty, it's the proper lengths going from component to component and really it's done properly. But the most important thing is fusing. You can see there's a fuse there between those two connectors and doing a battery system or any sort of electrical system, one of the most important things you can do is have the proper fusing and the proper wire. One of the unique things I mentioned was that I want to hide most of the wires away. And so in order to do this, I need to step some systems off of the board to create space to access them. So I created this using just some really standard drywall screws and some tubing, and it created standoffs for this component so I could access all the wires beneath the Serbo GX. The cool thing with Victron products is they can also communicate with one another. So I also connected them all with communication cables. The last thing to do is to connect this battery system to the house. Not only does it supply power to the panels of our tiny home, but it can also take power from the grid and charge up this battery system as well. And not only that, but the inverter can act like an automatic switch. That means if the grid goes down, it can notice and supply power from the batteries automatically without me having to do a thing. You won't even notice, but I can also come over and do it manually no matter which way I want. Let's take a look at what it's powering and how long it'll last. Our battery system supplies power to the most crucial components of our tiny home to keep it running. It supplies power to our fridge, our range above our cooktop, our Wi-Fi and computer circuit, our utility closet, which powers our hot water and filtration. It powers our well pump, all of our plugs in our house, as well as every interior light. But how long does it last? Without any power coming in to resupply the batteries, that means without any solar or anything, recharging it, we can run this house, all of our crucial systems for over two weeks. That's pretty crazy considering these are all 120 volt systems, like a fridge. It's pretty awesome. And I gotta give a quick shout out to Battleborn here. They are the best battery company on the planet, hands down. Their Life PO4 batteries are unbelievably stable and safe. And they got us through five years of off grid van life while using everything we needed to in that time like I, I just i can't give them enough credit let's go over some of the questions that i frequently get asked about a battery backup system like cost and skill also if you have any questions drop them in the comments below i'm more than happy to answer them in terms of cost having a battery backup system is expensive we are in an age right now where the technology is only getting better but it's not a super common thing for say households in van life it is but to bring them into a household and have enough power to run your house can be an expensive thing so it's not for everyone in terms of skill building a system like this really doesn't take that much skill there are so many resources online and i have lots listed in the description below for you to help learn how to do this honestly anybody can do it i'm not an engineer i'm not an electrical engineer i'm not an electrician like you can just figure it out there's so much help online to be able to do it some other considerations are is solar the best option for recharging yes i i would have to say that the best option is a mix of things. You shouldn't have one way to recharge your system. In our case, we have the grid to recharge it because it's a battery backup system. We're gonna have solar, which we can hopefully rely on to reduce our cost of our monthly bill from the grid. But also make sure you have a generator. A lot of people think if you're off grid, off of the electrical grid, that you can't run a gas generator. Just, you need to do what's best for you and running a generator is just one of those things that is a must because say where we live, cold climate where it gets very dark and not a lot of sun in the winter, you need to have a generator to be able to recharge your system when the sun just really isn't there. 
In the future, I'm excited to add our solar up on the roof. That way it makes our battery system a pretty closed system and can produce power for us when the grid is down, which happens often, which is crazy. But we're thinking of going back off grid in the future. But for now, the hybrid solution of on and off grid living works really well for us. I appreciate you watching till this point in the video. Thank you very much. If you could give this video a thumbs up, it really helps me out and gets this video out there to people who want to learn just like you did during this video. And also, if you're not yet subscribed, make sure you click the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next video.